Recently, I had a car accident that motivates me to deal with the scan that I'm showing right now and recreate the um, tail light for my car since uh, I have to wait about a month or more or receive uh, the replacement part. This is more a traditional method uh, and of course based on the tools provided in Autodesk Inventor. We have a very quick overview what I'm going to be showing. The method that I used is based on points projected on a from a plane. Then we have some axes that are going to overlap with the scan data. Then we are going to have work points, then we are going to have splines, and then some traditional methods for create surfaces. And finally, I did some splits for the 3D printed part. So they, it is split it so I can 3D print it without troubles. I'm not going to use this data exactly, just because I have noticed that when I use a 3D scan that has the mapping of the reflections, so the colors and all that, my, computers, my computer becomes very slow. So this is probably something that also happened to other people. So I have this other scan of the side that is not damaged on the car accident. So um, I'm going to cover all that in this other one. Okay, so now let's just jump into um, the details. So we have the 3D scan, then we have what I call my boundary. If I go to take um, data from a mesh like this one, I want to make it on a constant way. So with this, what I'm saying is that I want straight lines from where I'm going to be taking the data and not random points trying to get uh, something like a straight line because it is going to be or like a snake and you are going to end up with very rough uh, results from your modeling. So the ideal is to create the boundary and create, in this case, what I'm doing is to create points. Let me show you. Okay, so here I have the points on the sketch. So those points are actually, they are free to move along the line, but at the end, when they are projected into the surface of the scan, they are going to be a, a straight line at the end of, or well, straight uh, spline <laughs> that is inside uh, a plane, let's say, that is defined by this line and somehow. Okay, so as mentioned, the first thing is to create um, axes that are going to pass through my scan and in there I can have that uh, chance of creating the points. So the points can be created directly with just work point and picking the axis and picking an element here at the mesh, but I will prefer to recommend to, to not do that. Here is a tool that Autodesk Inventor has that I at the beginning thought it is not making much because the results used to be wrong, but after this trial and error, I got to found how uh, to use it better. So in this scan, for example, uh, we are going to use the fit mesh phase. So this command has a brush size. In my case, I use the 100 and cover as much as possible inside this um, sketch, right? So the result from, the, from it, let me show you. I will turn off, well, maybe, yeah, I will turn off the, the mesh. So this is the result. So as you can see, I have some bumps in this zone where uh, I have the log of the, sorry, the, the, the DFSI um, for, the, for the car and other surfaces that, uh, for example, this one here that came and it is not desirable, but in general terms, it is copying very good, doing a good job by copying the surface of the car. So let me highlight this. So you can see that 
it is kind of acceptable. It is sticking in this corner. It is, well, doing this bumpy thing in here, but for the rest, doesn't seem to be that bad. Unfortunately, by itself, this surface is an horrible idea to use it directly. So let me show you the analysis from this surface if we uh, turn on the zebra analysis. So this is by so far not acceptable as a surface uh, to work with, but it is acceptable for picking points. Now you will see. So the advantage of using this type of surface instead of using the 3D uh, scan data is that, uh, well, it is lighter. Uh, sometimes when you are trying to pick the point that you want to project into the surface, the program is going to go on each of the points that are on the way on your cursor. So it is going to make it slow. So my recommendation is create one of these surfaces with a, a fit uh, mesh facets fit, fit mesh tool. And that's going to help you because you can play around with the location of these points along the, the line that I mentioned, and they're always going to be consistent. The points in here, let me, let me turn them off. These points are never going to fail as long as they are inside our frame and our, and, and with the fact that our fit mesh surface is larger than our rectangle or our area. So as you can see, I have here a 3D um, sketch where I already did some, some work. So here is where uh, the magic happens. So of course you need to create the points. The points are going to be uh, from selecting uh, the work point um, feature, picking uh, the axis and picking the surface. But this is going to be a very labor intense thing. So, uh, well, it doesn't seem to be that much. I repeated this many times. So 261 is not the number of points in this, in this uh, matrix. But what I did is uh, an iLogic rule that is going to help me to do this quicker, at least, uh, well, I'm not an expert on iLogic, but we are, with one hour of looking on the internet, I found how that um, programming looks. So you can pause the, the video, take a look to this programming. So it is going to basically uh, automatically, automatically pick the face and you need to go picking the axis. Sounds like a lot of work, but you can do it directly on the model tree. Uh, obtaining uh, those work points that you require. The other aspect that I didn't mention is that this set of axes, in reality, they are a pattern. So I can vary that pattern, the distance of the pattern. I can vary the area. If I want to shrink this, I can do it and the model is not going to fail. So it's a pretty consistent way how to extract uh, and have some flexibility because one of the things, for example, if we uh, do it directly with an axis and the mesh, um, scan mesh, it is, it is going to fail if you move the point. So that will be uh, start from scratch, basically. But with this one, it is not going to. Look that uh, my rectangle is also constrained from the region so I can have full con control where it is located. So part of the good practices that you will require to have in this method. So there is a key thing when we are going to go point, point by point creating the splines. So let me create this one. Okay, now I have it done, it is important if you take a look, I have here a, a, a comp, right? So we can click on display curvature and you can see that here is a distortion on the curvature. And if we go this way, we're going to see this other one getting down um, by a certain distance, right? 
So how do we fix this? Because if you if you don't fix this, you're going to have, again, a strange surface. So you need to have this, let's say, a tight spline. So the important thing in here is let me uh, display curvature off. The key thing in here is to right click the spline and click on the spline tension and drag this thing up to 100. So as you can see in the preview, it is now closer to a straight connecting or, or a spline that is connecting points on the most effective way. Um, the closest distance, let's say. Okay, so after that, it is it is ready. This plane is ready to be used on a loft command, for example. So I will uh, add this other one. Okay, so now we do the exactly the same thing. Spline tension, drag it to 100 and accept. Okay, so the rest of the splines are already on that condition. I will finish the 3D sketch and uh, something very important to do in here is um, maybe remove or turn off all those points and uh, the splines. I don't want to see them. I'm sorry, the axis. <laughs> so um, here at the, at, the, at the ribbon on view tab, you will see the object visibility. So you can remove uh, or turn off the user work axis and user work points. All right, perfect. And you can also remove or take the visibility off for the 2D sketches. So now we have just this. Great. So now that we have on a constant way, every X number, our splines, we can be um, confident that we are going to have a nice surface. So let me do the loft command. This is going to be on as a surface, right? So for sure, if it is, you, if you're only having geometries like this one, open geometries, there is no way that Inventor is going to show you as the first selection, the output as a solid. It is going to be surface. Okay, so let's start adding them. Unfortunately, since they are just um, lines, they cannot have another condition more than a free condition. So there are no G1 or G2 uh, chances for that, but the result is going to, to be good. Don't worry. Okay, now we have this surface seems to be pretty similar to the one in here, but it is not because, for example, the way how I place the points and the axis is uh, that they are avoiding the bump in here, for example. So it is going to be a better surface. So let me turn on this other Zebra um, analysis. One second. Okay. It's resisting. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. Sure. This is a new surface. I will click OK in here. And well, these yellow things that you see at the back are um, from the 3D scan. No, from this other surface. There you go. Okay, so this looks more decent. I know that it is not super beautiful, but it is showing something that uh, is way much better, right? Than uh, the previous thing that we saw. So let me active this other analysis. I will need to pick this, let's say, yeah, this to here. Okay. So we can see here the curvature, as mentioned earlier, it is not beautiful, but it is decent. I have to say, uh, since I'm not uh, designing the car, <laughs> I'm just uh, making some uh, reverse engineering for um, create a part. So. I think it is acceptable enough for my purposes, at least. So another way to test uh, how this model is going to, to look is by adding a thickness. 
So I'm, I will add a three millimeter thickness with the opposite direction. I will click OK. And I will turn off my loft surface. And for make it more interesting, I will go to view and on the appearance for the environment, I will pick, let me see where it is, desert, what's desert? Let's find out. Oh yeah, desert looks fine, looks fine, yeah. So this is kind of reflective thing, let's say dry sand. Yeah, that, this one, I like this one, yeah. So we can also judge from this type of um, display how the surface is going to look, right? So there are some stuff that can be improved. So the way how we could improve is adding more points or moving them or avoid, I don't know, uh, maybe the bumps uh, from the brand and stuff like that. So there it is. It's a more traditional method maybe it doesn't require a lot of skills like uh, the freeform method so as you notice i always take care about good practices on my uh, 3d modeling and making sure that i show stuff that is relevant in on those aspects so you may should consider to see this other video about good practices in general with cat software so it is uh, using solid edge but it has a lot of uh, tips that can be implemented in any CAD software.